everybody, it's EJ from iDesign.com here again on the NAB floor. And today I'm here with the other half of BroGraph, Dave. And uh, he's presenting tomorrow, right? Right. On a little bit of stuff. Tell us what you're presenting on. So tomorrow I'm going to be talking about how to be efficient in your workflow, which is something that I think some people aren't really necessarily good at. So hopefully I can help a little bit. We're also going to talk about being efficient with your scenes and how to use things like instances, lower poly count, stuff like that. And then working with contractors over the internet, that's a big deal too. A lot of people are working at home in their underwear now. <laughs> so that's, that's what I'm going to be going over and just breaking down some of the scenes I've been working on lately and how we did that, as well as some displacement stuff, like how to do octane displacement, things like that. Awesome. So yeah, you guys are big into octane. You guys have a plugin called Luminance. And if all of you out there haven't checked out the iDesign store. We have a new product up there from the BroGraph guys called Luminous. Uh, so why don't you tell us a little about, about the plugin and maybe for some Octane users that are just starting or people who are interested in Octane, kind of describe uh, kind of what the gap you're kind of filling in there that from the difference of lights in cinema versus Octane. Well, when you're working with Octane, it's a third party render engine, GPU, and it has area lights, it has HDR, but you don't have, number one, you don't have a spotlight right off the bat. And you can build your own, but it's kind of a pain. And even if you do, you don't have the actual spotlight in your viewport, and you can't see the fall off and all that in your viewport. You don't get that feedback. So this kind of bridges the gap. You know, we, we used Expresso, and we built this whole thing and spent a lot of time on it so that you don't have to, essentially. So um, if you open a spotlight in Octane, you have your Octane window open, you can see the fall off and the cone. We also have uh, gobos built in. And so you can select gobos or do your own preset gobos either with luminance or an alpha channel. And you can change the fall off on that and make like blurry shadows of like trees and stuff, things like that. But it also has some other extras in it too. Number one, it's really helpful for me as an IES light tester. I love IES lights, but sometimes it's kind of hard to look at those little icons and figure out what it is exactly. So this lets you plug them in and see like 20 of them at once and pick which one you want. And we also have something called Quick Sky, which is the thing I use the second most in there. Quick Sky is really for when you just want to hop into Octane real quick and start modeling something. And you don't want to have that generic, like blank gray sky that's in there. It has just a quick indoor, outdoor, and a studio scene just for you to mess with. But what's really cool about it is you can use your own HDR files as well. So if you're using like Grayscale Gorilla's HDR iLink, you can just like drag all their stuff right into it and it works natively with that in Octane. So that's really fun. And then we have some soft boxes and ring lights in there as well. And I know a psych is a real easy thing to make, but we threw in a psych in there just for fun with just quick adjustable heights and, and lengths and stuff like that, as well as a preset octane texture uh, to where you can just move the sliders around and just make a quick psych for a product or something. So yeah, it's not just a light, you got all these other really useful workflow stuff in like the IES lights, all that stuff. So that I think the IES light thing, I don't think a lot of people use those. So why don't you just kind of Give a little example of like what, what IES lights are, why you should use them, and, and like what use cases. Well, I really don't like to use them a lot because they're super noisy, so I try and use a spotlight instead sometimes, but if you're working on especially like architectural projects, um, you'll get these IES profiles sometimes, especially if you're working on an architectural scene that's using a very specific kind of light. You can get the profile from these manufacturers to put that light in there. You know, if you see a light and it's on the side of the building, it has this like pattern you know, coming out of the light, that yeah, that that is um, that is a profile that you can load. And so when you get those, sometimes it's like a curve, or it's a little file, or it's a little icon, and you just you're like, uh, I don't know which one of these is what and what it looks like, and I just want to throw them in the scene. So it's literally just a wall with with all of those in there, and you can turn them on and off and see which ones you like. Or if you want to just kind of pick one. You know, because you don't have to have a specific one, and you just want to go in and do some sort of architectural and make it look nice. It's just another quick reference, you know, just another thing to save you time. That's what the entire plugin is about. So you can find that on sale now for $49, right? It's like over 30% off. So you can grab that on the iDesign.com store. And uh, we're going to be doing a lot more Octane stuff. I know you guys have, if you guys have been watching the YouTube channel, we got David Ariev. We're going to get some of these guys on there doing some sweet Octane tutorials and, 
and uh, lighting and all these stuff. I'm, I, I just used Octane for the first time today. Dave yeah. was helping me with my little uh, sketch and tune characters. So it's been a lot of fun learning all that. So you guys also have the website, brograph.com. You guys have your podcast. You guys are keeping up with the, the motion graphics news. You're also, and this is really interesting, I've been seeing a lot of... Uh, 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 speaking events at uh, schools and stuff like that. So why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got into that and and uh, like what are those students uh, like really getting engaged and really getting into motion graphics? Like what are you seeing in the, the school system? Well, we started just doing some random speaking first off and, and just posting it online and I think people are picking up on that saying, hey, I'd like for you to come talk, you know. So it started out, I had a friend who wanted me to come speak to an elementary school and I was like, oh man, I don't know how to talk about Octane to elementary school students. <laughs> so I had to kind of like come up with a fun way to do that, you know. But then we posted that and um, we've been getting some more responses on that. We just went to like this, this magnet school, like tech school, and it's just, they do video and they have their own YouTube channels and it's this like new age school. They asked us to come out and we, we went down there and they were like super nice. I think both of the instructors there listened to the show and um, we came down there, none of the classrooms have a fourth wall, it's all glass all the way down. And so uh, we went in and talked to them and like, they're, it's so cool, they're just so interested in this kind of thing. You know, they, they wanna know about cinema and they wanna know about like how they can promote themselves as a motion graphics artist and do social media. And uh, we spoke for, I guess like an hour and a half, you know, and there's some amazing students there into all different kinds of technologies. Um, one of them in particular showed us he has a free period every day to just do anything techy he wants to do. So he was building like this VR rig with like one of those leap things on it and you could see your hands when you moved them around and all of that stuff. It's really cool to see. Elementary school. Uh, no, this wasn't elementary school. Uh, okay. This was a high school. Say, man, yeah. We're, we're, we're oh, that would be crazy. Jobs really quick. I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah. So, so we're starting to build these presentations now that are for every level of school, so we can go in and kind of get them interested in motion graphics. Okay, awesome. So that's that's great. Uh, so we have the the podcast that's every week, yep. right? You have, uh, are you working on anything else on the site? You got the Rando Render. Why don't you tell us a little yeah. bit about the Rando Render? That's yeah. been a lot of fun. So here's the thing. And, and, and Chris Schmidt and Chad and Nick, they've been talking about this as well, is doing daily renders has to have a purpose. You know, you've got you've to go in and, and have a goal to like actually learn something. It's not just about, oh, I want to get more Instagram followers or whatever. You know, this is about learning something every day. And maybe you can't do it every day, whatever. But um, my problem in trying to do a daily or an almost daily, as we call it, is that it's this thing It's like, oh, here's another garbage geometry render with some shiny stuff in it and a bunch of balls, you know? It's like, I'm not learning anything from that. I don't, I don't feel like it's, I don't feel like it has any meaning to it. Like I'd sit down in front of a blank canvas and be like, I don't, I don't know what to do. Uh, 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 sphere, okay. Uh, shiny gar garbage geometry back here, you know, it looks like a garbage bag, you know, or, or the one, you know, here, a new forest scene, because all this forest stuff came out and everybody's using these, like, these uh, substance textures and stuff. And What's you know, people doing? I'm going to copy that. And exactly. Put a little dude in this big scene. Yeah, but that's, that's people's thing, right? right yeah. Let people be people and, and you come up with something else. And so that, I didn't feel original doing any of that. So it's like, I want a purpose and I want something I have to do. So when clients come to you, they usually do two things. And we have the, the three E's of, of learning motion graphics and getting good at motion graphics. Number one is education. Number two is emulation. And number three is repetition. And if you're asking me why it's an R, it's because you got the education part covered. So the, uh, the repetition is doing it every day. The education is doing tutorials online. And then there's emulation as well. So if a client comes to you, the first thing they're gonna do is throw something crazy at you that you've never done before. And you're gonna be like, okay, I gotta figure out how to do this. So that's number one. The number two is they're also going to come to you and they're going to say, um, I like this style. I like this other style. Oh, EJ has done this thing over here. I really like that style. And you're gonna to have to emulate that style because that's the style that the client wants. So our site randorender.com has a button and you click the button and it's going to do a random combination of two things and it's going to give you one of those two things either something really weird 
to have to tackle or a style to emulate. So it might say make a, an EJ inspired balloon like I got and I had to figure out, okay, how we make this look like some EJ would do. Or it's going to say, oh, it's or, or a beeple. I had to try and do a beeple one, beeple inspired knife. Uh, how do you do that? You hit the button and it gives you a combination and it says make a wood grain sofa you know or or make a, a banana headphones or something so so you're you're doing what your client would be doing and then you're emulating styles that they would be throwing at you and for me it's changed like my my way of looking at dailies because i don't like i didn't like dailies until i started doing this and now i'm like okay this is fun like i have an actual purpose every time i want to sit down and like make a, a daily so so it's a lot of fun randorender.com and if you uh, if you make one, make sure you do the hashtag Rando Render and on Instagram or on Twitter. That way we can grab it and put it up on our uh, our gallery on the website. Awesome, awesome. So randorender.com. Yep. We got brograph.com. Dave from Brograph, thank you so much for taking the time out to talk with us. Yep. Your talk is tomorrow? Yeah, right, tomorrow. Right before me? No, after. After me? All right, yeah, I'm going to... I'm going to brograph sandwich in my presentation, but all right. Thanks again, David, so much. And we'll see you all out there in the next video. Bye, everybody.